Hey everyone, it's Lauren, your host. Welcome back to Intuitive One. I hope everyone is having an amazing time with all of the transitions from Pisces into Aries season. It's going to be Aries season tomorrow, very soon. So I thought that it might be appropriate to record an episode related to some things I've spoken about in the past related to transitions and intuition and some reasons or rather the predominant reason why it might be challenging to trust your intuition and kind of exiting or ending the season of the sun being in Pisces, which is a water sign and very intuitive. I am going to approach this in a way that might be a different spin or twist on number one, astrology related to intuition, but also just some things to keep in mind from what I've seen, what I've experienced, and what I understand intuition to be. So if you're wanting to discover and strengthen your bond with your intuition further, deeper, or maybe you're a Pisces sun, or maybe you're an Aries sun, or you're really just wanting to explore why it's challenging for you to trust your intuition, this episode is probably going to be very helpful for you. So first and foremost, I want to start out with some of the astrological understandings that I've come to find and taking into account intuition. Intuition is the vast wisdom and knowledge that surpasses all logical understanding of the mind. It's literally the soul's understanding of what we are here doing together and intuition does not comprehend any time elements it's not time bound the mind is the mind the human mind recognizes time and spatial differentiation but the wisdom that's held within intuition far exceeds what the mind is able to comprehend when really it's quite simple as well. It's not something that we reach for or that is in a, I guess, more expanded place, but rather it's at the core of all that is. And from what I know about at least intuition within the human body, I recorded an episode, I would highly encourage you to listen to it, related to meditation with intuition and what I believe happens as we're meditating with our intuition and it really relates to water and light and um, yeah, I go into the neuroscience, definitely if you're, you know, (laughs) if you're into the nerdy way of life. as I am, I would definitely check that out. I'll put put the link in, in the show. But within the human body, you know, we're made up of about 99% water. And when we think of intuition, intuition is the highest frequency of intuition is clarity. Crystal clear clarity of being able to see. And when we think of our own water, our own being, we're basically like pools of water. And really, when we're seeing things, we're not necessarily seeing the things, like a more, a more, a deeper way of exploring sight is to know that water absorbs light. And our eyes are also about 90% water. So when we're seeing things, 
what we're seeing is actually the light that's held within water. And <clears throat> so when we take that into account, and again, I have the meditation video, I highly encourage you to check that out. If you meditate um, specifically with your eyes closed, you know, there's some cultures that believe the pineal gland in the brain is basically the eye of God or that's where the quote-unquote third eye is within the body, the anja uh, chakra, which is between the eyebrows. It's supposedly very concentrated in intuitive essence and that intuitive um, element within the body. But really when an individual is in an enlightened or very blissful state throughout meditation, the whole body is relaxed and you're not bringing light into, into the eyes. Your eyes are closed. And so with that then, typically if your eyes are closed, you're taking in less light and you're really relaxed. Well, a lot of the time you'll fall asleep. But you can get to a place so deep in this relaxed present place where you feel euphoria, you feel bliss, you feel extremely awake, awakened. Maybe not even so much awake as just an enlightened and awakened state of being where there is no, you're not asleep, you're completely awake with the presence of all that is. And so, anyway, in that in the past video that I made, I kind of explored that in the neuroscience and how when we're meditating, really what we're doing is we're exploring the light within our water. We're exploring the light that's within the darkness and that relationship between darkness and light within us. And <clears throat> it can get to the place and the point of this very awakened sense of being and so moving from you know literally the ast astrological wheel house of Pisces which is a very deep water sign and the sun is within the water so many historically speaking and there's not saying this is wrong but when we talk about Pisces being very intuitive we're also talking about the sun being in a water sign so we're we're see we're able to see more because the sun is being captured or kind of um observed within the water and so to take what we know and what we see and understand and explore and we take it into you know, Pisces is the ending, it's the last of the astrological wheel. And as the sun moves into Aries, Aries is the beginning. Aries is the start. Aries is the pioneer. It's, 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 it's okay. We are awake now. We're, we're, we just went to the depths and now we're stepping out of the water knowing what we know now. And we're bringing it to light. And what are we going to do with it? And so when we're talking about intuition, in that way of observing the light within the water and really see, being able to see, and then we move into an astrological space of, well, now the sun is in a fire sign, which is start, initiate, heat, transmutation. How do we take that clarity that we just had and channel it into a way at the start? And so one of one thing that if you have a hard time trusting your intuition, number one, it's really important to explore how you start things because much of the time, our intuition, well, number one, intuition is at the foundation of everything. It's the wisdom or the akash of the soul. It is knowledge that has been 
moved through energetically speaking multiple lifetimes you know it's just it never never goes away it's always present it's always there and so when we're starting things it's really important to explore and understand how am I showing up as I'm starting something because the one thing one of the like the number one foundational thing that will put a barrier or a wedge between you and trusting your intuition is fear. It's fear. And when we start things, when we start and we're at the beginning of something, our ability to be in a state of non-attachment to the start of is very important and when I say non-attachment that's literally okay you can observe that you have fear you can observe that you have worry but if you ta attach yourself to that emotion or that feeling then that is going to be an automatic barrier to you and your intuition and understanding it further on a deeper way and on a deeper level so as we go into Aries season at the beginning of the Aries equinox and Aries, the start of the basically lunar new year, you know, it's important to explore how do you show up at the beginning? I'll be the first to say with this <laughs> podcast you know, I, I really had to work through some things that showed themselves at the beginning. Feeling like I needed to have it all figured out. Feeling like I needed to have a certain kind of look and aesthetic and do it a certain kind of way. And, you know, all of that. Feeling like I needed to have it figured out. It was all just time that I was basically not starting and denying the experience to myself. I was not allowing myself to step into it fully. I was creating barriers for myself. Oh, I need to watch this YouTube video about microphones. I, I need to watch this. I need to curate a space. I need to do this. I need to do that. And it really what that was was just keeping me safe, a perceived sense of safety because I was letting fear run the show because it was an experience that I had never experienced before and I was experiencing fear. I was experiencing worry and that's not to say that fear is a bad thing but I will say that the frequency of the general population, the frequency field, I mean look at the world right now, is very much held at a fear frequency. Very much so. And what happens is there are people and groups and individuals who, I know this might seem radical, <laughs> but attach themselves to that fear because that's a very human experience. Fear has also been impressed on the collective energy field for a very long time. It's an aspect of being human and when we experience these emotions what happens is then the mind conceptualizes what's going on and tries to make a storyline out of the emotion compared to just allowing the emotion to be observed to be witnessed to be experienced and to be moved through so going back to the podcast you know when I started this podcast if I would have taken some time to sit with myself and say, you know what, Lauren, you know what's going on. You do not have to have it all figured out. You're allowed to feel whatever you feel. You're allowed to feel the emotions. You're allowed to feel the fear. Feel it. You're safe. You're okay. You're okay to feel this feeling. And that's something that's very important to keep in mind when it comes to fear. 
is, you know, historically speaking, throughout your life, depending on what your upbringing was or whatever, it may not have been safe to feel fear based on how it was attuned to with, you know, caregivers or whatever or peers. It may not have felt safe to feel that fear. And so then that comes with the inner parenting of like, okay, you know what? I'm safe to feel this now. And this isn't speaking about, you know, more, um, uh, what is the survival aspects? You know, this isn't the survival type of experience. This is purely based on emotions that come up, especially when we're talking about intuition, when we're when we're talking about trusting the unseen, when we're talking about, or maybe you are seeing, th- maybe it is what you're seeing and someone else does not. And that's not to say that it's a delusional state, but it's a very heightened sense of intelligence that you are connected to and you can sense into. And maybe another individual may not. Because again, the majority of the majority of the human collective field, energetic field, is fear based. And so it does take that very authentic and deep and vulnerable and observant and non attached state of being to really say, I trust. I trust. I trust what I'm feeling. I trust what I know. I trust it. And that's maybe something to think about, right? How often do you say to yourself, I trust myself compared to I'm worried about this. I'm nervous. I don't know. How many times do you tell yourself, I don't know compared to I trust myself. I remember. I remember how to get out of this. I remember how to move through this. I remember that it's okay. I remember what my soul is trying to tell me. I trust what my soul is saying. I trust my inner voice. I trust my inner um, compass. And to move into a state of trusting intuition and to move into a state of basically living in that frequency field which is very, is a very high frequency, it's really important to explore your relationship with fear. And it doesn't even have to do with intuition. It can, it quite literally can be a generalized type of experience, mainly pertaining to fear is what I'm saying. So explore your relationship with fear. When does it show up? What do you do when you are scared or you're nervous or you're anxious or you're worried or blah, 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 all of those things? And then how do you want to show up? How does your soul want to show up? How do you show up when you trust your intuition? How does it speak to you? How do you hear it? So go in a step, a little step deeper when we're talking about the light and the water and seeing When we see light, we also see wavelengths of sound. We also see wavelengths. You know, light is on a continuum. There's there's different spectrums of light and there's wavelengths of sound everywhere and they can impact the wavelengths, the light. Especially because, remember, we're water. And light is absorbed within water. Not all of the time, but much of the light that we see with our eyes is. And when we're talking about intuition and being able to see the third eye, the eye of God, the Anja, the, you know, highest frequency being clarity... We also have to keep in mind wavelengths, vibrations, 
it's a, a relationship. And so when we're talking about intuition with the astrology, I'm here to pose <laughs> a, I don't know, maybe it's radical, maybe it's controversial, I don't know. But, you know, maybe it's not so much that this sign is more intuitive or if this planet is in this sign, you have, you know, it's higher intuition. But maybe it's the relationship with the elements how they interact with each other, you know, the vibrations within the relationship of water and light, that creates a specific and very nuanced, nuanced and specific way of interpretation of intuition. And I hope you're with me on this. I feel like I might be going a bit deep with this, but, you know, the the aspects within astrology and if you're not into astrology still stick around um I'm sure there will be something in this message for you but you know it, it's different when so take for example if you're on a walk and you're walking through a park let's say it's summertime sun shining there are leaves on the trees um there might be a little uh, lake right beside you, and it's just, there's trees, there's the lake, it feels good, the sun's out. So, your relationship with that walk is not just you and the tree, or you and the sunlight. It's all of those things coming together, creating an experience, and within that experience, you're able to sense into some kind of feeling or um, understanding of what you're doing, what the experience is like. Maybe you're feeling enjoyment. Maybe you're feeling grounded. Maybe you're feeling whatever you're feeling, right? Point of it being, it's not just about the tree. It's not just about the sun. It's not just about the lake. It's about all of it put together. And the way that they interact, the way that they are when you look up into the trees, the leaves, and the sun is shining through the leaves, which, side note, that's literally my favorite color of green, <laughs> is when the sun is shining through the leaves. But you look up and you see this beautiful green, that relationship of the sun shining through the leaves and your ability to look into the leaves and see those colors and shades of green there's a relationship there and so with intuition and astrology and all of these things intuition is a very unique relationship with the wisdom of the soul it's not just water it's not just light it's not just wavelengths it's all of them coming together and providing you with clarity, a clarity that is very beautiful and unique. And kind of going a little bit deeper into that, um, from the Gene Keys, they discuss intuition as being wind and it providing clear audience And so there's this richness to intuition, but the barrier that will keep you from the intuition or from trusting your intuition and understanding it is fear. The mind will create concepts to help you quickly move out of fear. And so if you have not understood your relationship with fear and you haven't explored it in a way that feels like you know when, why, how it shows up and you're not vulnerable with yourself in that way, then you are inevitably, I'm going to be a little, yeah, I'm going to be a little intense with this, but you are inevitably, after listening to this, choosing fear over intuition I know that was, if you stuck around after that, I'm sure there's some people that may have just clicked off, <laughs> but 
but I'm so serious. It's not easy stepping into the intuitive space initially because fear is everywhere. Fear, fear is ingrained in the collective energetic lower frequency fields. No one comes out of this human experience without experiencing fear. So inevitably to move out of those shadow frequencies, to move out of those lower frequency fields that the majority of the collective is existing in, we first have to explore our relationship with fear. If we don't explore it, you can still move into a state of understanding and trusting your intuition. However, at some point that fear will show up in a sneaky way, which inevitably will create resistance to one or more frequency fields that you're wanting to move and shift into that are higher, that are of the higher dimensions. At, at one, one place or another, you know, I've worked with clients for several years and I have had some clients who have, you know, and, and people that I know too that are just kind of like, you know, Lauren, I've, I've never experienced trauma before. I've never experienced anything bad. I had an okay childhood and, you know, it's all, we didn't really fight, blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of like, okay, so basically you learned that if there's an issue, it's not okay that there's an issue. We keep everything cool, calm, and collected, but what happens when you experience an issue at some point in your life? And so, yeah, that lower root chakra, that's great. You know, you you may not have experienced terrible traumas or whatever, but at some point you will be faced with fear. You will be. It's a human experience and is pressed on the lower frequency fields of the collective as humans. So while, yeah, you may be able to trust your, in, your intuition to a degree, if you do not have the awareness and understanding of how fear operates in your life and when it shows up, it will come at some point. Whether it be your personal power, whether it be within the heart chakra, with love-based things, whether it be, you know, with your voice, whether it be with your um, self-worth, whatever, wherever it is, it will show itself sometime, some way. Um, so that's really important to keep in mind. And then going into airy season, going back to the astrology, we're going into a time where it is the beginning. We just went to the depths together. We transformed. We went through multiple experiences of fire, earth, air, water, fire, air, earth, water, fire, air, earth, water, fire, air, earth, water. And on the eve of going into Aries season, even if you're listening to this and, you know, it's within Aries season, what are you, how are you choosing to take these seasons of the elements of the grounding, the the wind, you know, the vibrations of the intuition, the, where am I? Uh, I don't even know what element I'm at, but you know, the depths of the water, the fire, what we're seeing within. Now at the start where we're back to fire, how do you go from the depths of the water, from where all of the depth of the water is illuminated, right? It's, it's illuminated. We can see. We weren't able to see the depth of the water, but once the sun went in, whoa, it's like the depth of the ocean just made itself apparent. The depths of our emotions just made themselves apparent how far we can go within ourselves emotionally 
you know, a Pisces season where the sun is in the Pisces sign can be very emotional. Why? Because we're lighting up. We're lighting up the depths. It has no bounds. When you think of water, it has no bounds. I mean, shoot, going back to the body, going back to, you know, our air that we breathe, it is a relationship with water. What we see, it's a relationship with water. And also light and also vibrations. It's this unique experience. And then also, you know, we are a part of earth as human beings. We are a part of, of the earth. We are, our bodies are the density of Gaia. So it's this like relationship of wisdom held within each one of these elements. And we just went through a cycle together of doing this beautiful dance multiple times throughout the year. And now we're back to the beginning. We're back to point zero. The end, you know, Pisces is also the end. So whatever is, has ended is ending. That's a huge aspect of intuition as well. And trusting intuition, knowing, you know, this isn't right for me. This is right for me. At any point in your life, at any point, you have the divine right to say this is for me or this is not for me. I'm going after that. I changed my mind. You have the divine right to do that. And so at the end of literally the lunar year, solar year, astrological year, <laughs> it's, it's really important to explore how do you show up at the end of things and then at the beginning of a new chapter. When the curtain closes... While the other curtain is opening, what is your relationship with that experience? And when you are deeply in a, a state of awareness and you're in a deep state of trusting intuition in a way of choosing to step into that compared to stepping into the fear that will try to pull you away and then concept and then cause you to go down a conceptualizing cyclical pattern of looping and ruminating thoughts over and over and over again instead of doing that what would it be like to trust your intuition at the end of something and at the beginning of another that's not to say we're avoiding our fear but we observe it, we see it, we know how it operates, but we're choosing to go higher. We're choosing to step into a higher state by trusting the intuition. And with Aries being the beginning, it's being the fire. It's it's like lighting a it's like lighting a candle. And we can think about can even think about the energetic field, the energetic collective field at the start, you know, when we're observing the light within water while it dances within these sound waves and these vibrations. You can think of Aries as striking the candle, the first spark that is inevitably going to be seen in all of the water, whether it be outside of us, within us, on a collective level, we are stepping into a season where the candle that burns, that first light, that first match, that first spark, that's what's about to happen with Aries season. And that's going to be imprinted in the collective for a whole nother Deb debatably, you know, uh, continuously, forevermore, but even so, you can also say that within this astrological wheel, it's a new spark. And so how are you going to start 
this new spark for yourself? Are you going to trust or are you going to fear? The choice is yours. There is no judgment. There is no attachment to either one. Because if we attach ourselves to even trusting, we're inevitably attaching ourselves to an experience and then not allowing, inevitably, unconsciously, not allowing ourselves to move through that experience further. How can we take the middle path? How can we step into the space of intuition without attaching ourselves to whatever the experience is. I did a past podcast episode and I, shoot, I can't remember which one it was at this point, but um, I was talking about how one of the first times that I went to a sound healing experience, sound bath, I had gone to... (laughs) And this was a complete, completely intu- intuitive experience, but I had signed up for a yoga class and to my surprise, it was not a class. It was this women's event. So I showed up with, you know, my mat and my yoga clothes and hair up in a bun. Like <laughs> I thought we were about to do some, some yoga. I show up and everybody else is kind of dressed nicely and I walk into this yoga room like, okay, what is happening? And there's just this long table um, with roses on it. And it was basically this five-course beautiful meal that was served to us. And uh, we spoke about energy and just it was really beautiful, Um, very different. (laughs) Uh, There was a lot of uh, angelic transmutations and um, working with our energy codes and uh, our DNA energy. So it was it was really very interesting. And um, I'm very thankful that I got to have that experience. But then after that, there was a sound healing experience at the studio. So I was like, you know, it's Saturday I don't have anything to do after this and that was like amazing so I might as well stick around for this because who knows <laughs> you know um, so I stuck around and uh, as I and this was throughout one of my spiritual awakenings uh, one of the first spiritual awakenings that I was very present and aware for and went into the rawness with myself and did a lot of deep rooted healing. So this was during that time. And I went to the sound healing and at the start of it, you know, you get a bolster, like a big pillow for, to put your legs on and you can get blankets and just get really comfy and cozy. And so I got really comfy. I had like a couple blankets and I was laying there and, um, the, basically with the instruments, the closer that you're, the closer that you are to the instruments, the more um, immersive, I would say, the experience is, and it's encouraged to have your head towards the instruments. (laughs) It's so interesting because actually this experience catapulted me into becoming a sound healer and having my own crystal bowls and whatnot, but yeah, so I was laying there, and um, as the sound began I had my eyes closed and I had this vision, which visions are a part of my experience. And so I had this vision of like a bunch of feathers and the feathers started to like lift up and kind of open up. And then I just saw this big white light and I heard um, these angels tell me that I'm one of them and that I'm safe and I'm protected and you know at that time I was really working on my relationship to fear I had experienced some things and um 
you know, it was a total release, but I was like, wow, this is the start of this. <laughs> how is this going to, okay, here we are. I don't know how 90 minutes is going to go, but um, I'm already deeply in this. Okay, let's go. Like, and I was very open to it. I was available for it, which is a whole nother thing. But, um, you know, when we talk about attachments, I could have very much attached myself to that vision that I had. I could have really held on to it and all of that to say when we are really working with our intuition especially at the start of something that was the start that experience was literally the start of me becoming a sound healer and working with you know my crystal bowls and and I also you know manifested a trip to India and Nepal and I went to Nepal and traded my yoga mat left it in Nepal and filled my whole yoga mat bag full of um, bowls from Nepal, like metal bowls, and s somehow managed to travel with metal bowls in a yoga bag. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just, but that was the start of all of that for me. And um, how did I show up at the start? Did I attach myself? Did I have fear? Was I in a state of, oh my gosh, I had these visions, let me think about it, what does this mean, how do I, f all of these things, or did I just allow it myself to move through the energy with the energy? Almost like if you, if you can envision literal waves, sound waves, imagine that up and down motion of sound waves. And what we're doing is we're trusting the waves. So we're literally on the waves moving with them compared to getting stuck on the top of a wave or the bottom of a wave. We're moving with it. And, you know, at the start of airy season and talking about intuition and fear and all of these things, the fear would have been inevitably keeping me in a space, holding space, energetic matrix that would be a holding space that would not allow me to move forward and quite honestly same with if I would have attached myself to the experience of oh my gosh I just had this vision I was just contacted by angels blah 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 and I just got stuck on it and stuck on it well I would have been stuck on that like hill of a wave and then I would not have been able to move through the energy with the energy ultimately being able to expand my consciousness on a in a more expansive and and I don't want to me I don't mean expansive as in like I'm going out there but more expansive of an inwards journey of just really coming back to the core of awareness and the core of intuition like intuition is at the core it's the knowledge that's held at the core it's the clarity it provides clarity because you are tapping into the wisdom of the core of everything which is an expansive experience it's it's not um expansive or contractive so much as it's both in the same experience and so anyway if if you attach yourself to the experience of you know whatever you experience if you trust your intuition whether it be seeing things hearing things you know, just seeing the magic unfold, feeling the synchronies, seeing them exper be experienced, then inevitably you are attaching yourself to an energetic matrix field that there is more for your soul. And I say more hesitantly because more is not necessarily what it is. <laughs> um, but just for the purposes of this, there's more to expand on within yourself as well as contract within yourself that is beyond that experience. So with that being said, at the end of Pisces season, headed into Aries season, at the end of lighting up the depths doing what we needed to do at the depths, cutting things off, or maybe even exploring how we want to start things, maybe exploring how we want to spark something new, 
or develop something new, deeper, maybe even. As we step out of the depths that we just lit up, how are you choosing to step into the newness? How are you choosing to light the spark that will basically light the way for the rest of this upcoming year? And it will light the way of the energy. It will light the way of how your soul is continuing to imprint onto the collective field. It's super important to think about. I hope everyone has an amazing equinox. I also hope everyone has an amazing beginning to Aries season. Many blessings and well wishes sent your way for the start of a new astrological year. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast and thank you so much for being a part of the Intuit. Intu- <laughs> of course I stumble at the end. Thank you for being a part of the Intuitive One family. I'm so thankful that you're here. You're listening to my voice. If you want to connect further, currently right now I am running a lot of specials on for March Madness on Psychic Services. Um, it's something that just really lights me up. I love, I love going into the Akash. I love, just I just love it. It feels so much like home, and it just feels so much like uh, my gifts are being able to be just worked and expressed into the collective field. So. Um, I'll put more details if you're interested. You can check that out. I'm also on Instagram. I am now on Facebook. And uh, yeah, I really am just so thankful that you're here listening and you're a part of the family. So anyways, peace, love. I'll see you in the next episode.